Hello and welcome back to NetLore episode 10. Can you believe it, folks? We're on episode 10. Episode Did you ever think we get this far? I know. What a milestone. It only took us over a year, technically, considering the gap between episodes two and three. But never mind that. We're here. We're back. It's your it's your favorite co-host number one, Cybershell. Hello. And of course, with me is co-host number two, Bernie. Thing number two, Bernie. Uh, yes, today, Bernie has an interesting story for us, and I can't wait to hear it. I'm, 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 I'm going to be along for the ride with you folks. So let's sit back and enjoy episode 10. This, <laughs> this, this time around, I've decided to uh, look into an early internet celebrity, probably one of the earliest internet celebrities, which is kind of weird to think about because... Real net lore, folks. <laughs> not many people really remember who this person is. In fact, I didn't know who they were. Like, and I'll, I'll just go through kind of a lot of the things that people attribute to her. So here's just some of the headlines, okay? The first ever reality TV series showed 19-year-old student Jenny Cam, the first woman to stream her life on the internet, why the first life caster disappeared from the internet, and the internet's first cam girl. Jenny Cam, Jennifer Ringley, has been attributed with a lot of different firsts. You know, a lot of different milestones mm-hmm. in terms of being an internet celebrity. Right. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but yeah, I totally, this was such a thing on the early internet was like when webcams and like live streaming, like, you know, way before there was Twitch. I mean, there was obviously, again, not to cut you off, but there was like Justin TV, which was he wanted to like live stream his whole life a bunch. And there was also just, you know, I don't know, I guess that this even might have like roots back to like Japanese TV, like that one guy who was like the reality show where he was trapped in a room or whatever for so long and he had to like win prizes to get out. I don't know. But yeah, like live casting, like people just streaming their life 24 7 like that's a weird thing that's been around for longer than you'd think but i guess this might have been the first case of it this was not one of the first cases and actually I, i'm glad really? that you i'm glad that you have all that like knowledge because mm-hmm. i didn't look that much into it but i think the first example of a person like streaming their life to the internet like this was in 1994 four so two years before her and then the most popular examples besides her were of a coffee pot and a fish tank so (laughs) right right of course so this is the story of jenny cam so jenny cam ran from 1996 to 2003 and in its peak was receiving over four million hits a day over a hundred news outlets ran features on jenny as she gained prominence so she was a i don't know about household name but that's a lot for early internet. I mean, yeah. I don't know. People nowadays might not even lose four million hits a day, whatever. But like, dude. 1996. That's insane. Who is Jennifer Ringley? Jennifer Ringley was a student at Pennsylvania's Dickinson College. In 1996, the 19-year-old decided to challenge herself in web design. That spring, she set up a webcam in her dorm room for JennyCam.org. The site launched on April 14th and chronicled her life 24-7. Again, she is one of the earliest examples of being a life caster. And some of those photos on the side, they're in color. That's not how it was at the beginning. You know, in Mm -hmm. the beginning, her camera was in black and white, was really grainy, and only took photos every 15 minutes. Right. Having the bandwidth to do a 24-7 stream is, you know, I mean, back in the day, I mean, it's even nowadays, I guess it takes up a good amount. But I mean, it's true that the picture quality was less, but, you know, connection speeds were also a lot lower back then. The stream was pretty mundane. So... Again, literally, it's a live stream. So she just did chores, she would study. And that's when it wasn't just her empty room. She kept it on while she left the house. So even still, even with all of these kinds of, I mean, what to us seems really, (laughs) seems like a low bar back then was this revolutionary thing that people hadn't seen before. Right. I mean, think about it this way. Like, uh, I mean, nowadays, you can watch a stream of someone. And if you're not interested, you can flick over to another stream. But like, this was a novelty at the time. I mean, obviously you mentioned the parallels. Someone already, the, one of the headlines compared to the Truman Show, but like, you know, people just hadn't seen anything like this before. So, uh, that, you know, that's a big, that's a big factor. Yeah, it was such a big factor that she became a national phenomenon. So, I mean, I already mentioned before that she was covered in over a hundred news outlets, but you can see here, she was even the cover of oh, wow. Modern Ferret magazine. She appeared on David Letterman. On Letterman, yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, that's got to be crazy to uh, get like to be thrust into that level of attention for when you're just, you know, again, this was like nowadays, even the concept of going viral can be widely understood by everyone, even like little kids. But back then it was like normal people don't just become celebrities. That's just not that didn't that used to be how it could work. But she was also on TV on the show Diagnosis Murder as oh, herself. Yeah. Well, not as herself, as a character parodying herself in the episode Rear Windows 98 from season six. And I have the excerpt of her appearance here. Excellent. It's better. There she is. Wow. Nice living room. 
<laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, I'm afraid my paperwork's a lot more interesting. Bye-bye, Joanne Cam. <laughs> so, oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> Yeah, so she my just God. gets murdered. My God. <laughs> she that's just brutal. She gets murdered on diagnosis. That's awesome. Murder. I guess that's kind of a cool appearance. Might have to watch that episode. That's crazy. And, of course, she was on David Letterman. Oh, you got the Letterman clips. Nice. So I was able to find the interview. They copyright striked it off YouTube. I re-uploaded it. They copyright striked it again. So I had to <laughs> cut up the interview into little different sections. No way. That's crazy. We were just talking about how it can be so hard to find some of these old like Letterman and just, you know, talk show clips. And then they're not that easy to find. You can sometimes get lucky with clips on YouTube, but you'd be surprised. Like, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm surprised they went after you and tried to take down your re-uploads. It's crazy to think that all their, that's all in the system or whatever. Yeah. So this is um, a bunch of different clips cut out from the Letterman interview. And mm -hmm. I kind of sorted them a little bit by a few different things that I'd like to comment on. On. It's a good insight into kind of what her career was at the time. So this was in 1998. Live on the internet, please welcome Jenny Cam's own Jenny. Jenny. The first welcome e to the show. Thanks. Thank you very much for being here. Is uh, uh, I've heard a lot of stuff about the internet, a lot of you know, yeah, yada 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 about the internet, and I and I don't care about the internet. This to me is like the perfect idea for the internet, don't you think? <laughs> Based. So yeah, I think you caught on that is that he's very dismissive of the idea while <laughs> praising it. Dude, people didn't give a fuck about the internet before, like I mean, really before two thousand seven, but like in the nineties especially, it was such like a you know people. I mean, if you even had a computer, it wasn't like a guaranteed thing. <laughs> When I first started, I thought there are three possibilities. I'll quit when I graduate, I'll quit when I move in with someone, or I'll quit when I die. Mm. So I graduated last year, and right. Joffrey moved in in March, so we've got one option left. Oh, well, my goodness. Uh... My family's very supportive of me. At first, they kind of assumed it was some kind of pornography thing, which most people <laughs> assume right off the bat. But I kind of explained it to them, and, you know, over the last two and a half years, they've... My mom thinks that I should be charging $20 a month and making billions of dollars, so she's disappointed in that effect. Mm -hmm. Now, have, have other people started doing this since you uh, did it? There are hundreds of other people doing this mm -hmm. now, yeah. And, and how are those different from what you do? And it, does it worry you that you have this kind of competition? I don't even consider it a competition, but um, the vast majority of them, almost all of them, are either paid strippers or... Well, well, how do you get those? <laughs> So that's that's an interesting thing. Um, that's an interesting angle. Yeah, not to jump the gun, but I'm curious on how this was monetized. How she, if at all, she was making money off of this. I mean, oh, that actually, yeah, that's going to be addressed in a moment. But in addition to that, also, because I'm glad you pointed that out, because early on there wasn't really a lot of restrictions or definition for like this cam girl stuff and like what you were and weren't allowed to monetize with it, with like PayPal or something, and what these different payment processors were going to allow. How could there be laws on the book about, you know, cam girl site stuff if that wasn't even like a thing that existed yet? There were, it was really a sort of touched on this in the cyber squatting thing, which is that it was like the, you know, digital frontier, like no regulation because what they didn't know what they were going to be regulating yet. They didn't know what to, for, like what to expect. Yeah. And she tries to distance herself from the cam girl label. She calls them paid strippers. And that's interesting because it wasn't really a label that escaped her and people didn't throw at her because as we'll get into a moment with the next series of clips, she wasn't like shy from nudity on her streams, which you could argue there's a difference. And we're going to look, yeah, we're going to look at the nuance of that. You could easily argue that like, yeah, there's like artistic merit to it. It's not necessarily pornographic if it's just someone living their life. But at first, let's at least hear her defense for it. We can see a naked on this thing occasionally. If I happen to be naked, then yeah. Whoa. You have a boyfriend? I sure do. Now, does he live there with you? For now, he does. Well, see, now that's not good. We don't want him in the place. <laughs> I've had a lot of people complaining. No, no, that. get him out. We don't want the. What's this guy's name? Doug? <laughs> Joffrey. 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 No, we don't want Joffrey. Joffrey. Get Joffrey, Joffrey a room downtown. We don't need Joffrey oh. at the house, you know? He'll understand. He's actually just staying with me until he finds a place of Thank own. God. <laughs> um, but, and, and what about intimate moments? Intimate, you know what I'm talking about. 
Joffrey's not comfortable with that. Right. Sometimes he kind of like loosens up a little bit, but most of the time we turn off the lights and pull up the covers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it would be fine with you to have an intimate moment on the camera. Sure. If, if you didn't have an intimate moment on the Jenny cam, you would feel that somehow the experiment was a failure? No, I mean, I understand that everybody's got their own boundaries. Like, I'm not going to dump Joffrey just because he's got a little shy streak. Well, think him. about it. <laughs> you gonna volunteer? I, did, I would, yeah. yeah. I'd be happy to. I'll come over and we'll see what goes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, I'm canceling the rest of this episode. We're just going to watch old Letterman clips. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea, but I do like that. I mean, he points it out too, but it's just the idea of like, why are people watching this? If not just for, um, you're watching a cam girl, it's a little more clear why you're watching it. But if you're watching something like Jenny Cam, where it's more of a balance of um, someone just living their regular life, why would you watch that? What kind of person is watching that? And it's like, that kind of leads into these clips where it's almost talking about the more parasocial aspect of it compared to the competition. And you get a lot of positive response to this? I do. Um, one of my favorite emails last year, I got a message from a guy saying he was in college, it was a Friday night, and all of his friends were out, and he felt like a loser because he was sitting at sure. home. of course and he, he is. <laughs> Cam and, he, mm -hmm. and I was there on Friday night right. doing my laundry. So he said it made him feel better because he knows I'm popular. Right. Couple of losers. And yeah, that's right, a couple of losers, so he's not alone. This will replace television as we know it now. This will replace <laughs> television because this is really all people want. They just, people are lonely and desperate. <laughs> they're lonely, desperate, miserable human beings. They want, they're, they're reaching out, they want to see life somewhere else taking place. It's comforting, don't you think? I think the thing is that if you turn on the TV, you can see wild America and you can watch lions and badgers and antelope eating and sleeping and doing what they do. But for some reason, wanting to see people doing the same thing right. is considered sick and perverse. Well, I don't know about that exactly. That's very funny because he's clearly joking. But yeah, with the amount of like, if you could see the amount of man hours spent watching like the real life, just chatting, like type of Twitch streaming, you know, he was basically, basically predicted it, you know what I mean? But he was joking. No, that's very interesting. That's a funny clip. And uh, I totally get what you mean, what you're saying about like, um, just getting to see someone 24 seven, you're automatically gonna feel like you know them so well, you're gonna have that parasocial attachment, whatever. Like that's the kind of thing you can only get if you really do commit to having a stream like that. And she might not even, I don't even think she necessarily wanted to like go out and deliberately was trying to foster these parasocial relationships. She just like probably thought it would be a fun thing to do, but I'm, I'm definitely sure it, 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 you know, some people probably got way too attached to it. Yeah, there's definitely an argument to be made about that and especially with how early on it was where like a normal person would never have ever thought to be equipped for this kind of thing that's a lot different too i think in the perspective of it Jumping off from the Letterman clip, I want to go off on the defense. I mean, we mentioned this before, and I pointed this out before. Her defense against competitors that she wasn't a paid stripper. Now, Jenny was raised a nudist and had no reservations being nude and even masturbating on camera. The first time her and a boyfriend started kissing on stream, the site went down from traffic. And that was kind of the moment that people really look to and say, this is when she recognized that it got a lot more attention, right? And got a lot, mm -hmm. a lot more traffic. So- right. After that, she started doing more strip teases until 1997, because I guess there was some kind of group of hackers on <laughs> this. I, I forget exactly what the site was called, but there was a group of hackers who were getting really annoyed with the influx of cam girls. So she started taunting them. And during a strip tease, they ended up hacking her, demanding that she show more and then replaced her camera with images of gore, which then led her to receive death threats. And, you know, just a lot of other different messages blaming her for it. That's crazy. There was hacker drama and all this other shit. <laughs> Yeah. So after that happened, she stopped doing strip teases for a while while also being with Joffrey, who was not interested in being intimate on camera, right? Especially back then. Like, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a way to sort of tie this into like a modern thing, you know, I mean, where I feel like it's, again, I feel like this, people would think this is less weird now. People must have been so weirded out by this in the 90s. While she was dealing with all these hackers, there was also her first controversy, and this is her first major controversy. In 1997, the summer of 1997, Jenny began working as a web designer for National Geographic. Now, this only lasted around one to two weeks, and initially she claimed to have quit voluntarily to spend more time on camera, but others suspected she was trying to save face. Because of that, this is the first controversy to really call into question her employment 
employment and ability to live outside of Jenny Cam. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting aspect of it. Just like if this is going to be such a popular thing, is she going to try and have a normal job and a normal life or just lean into the whole... This is like really where we start to um, see more of the anti-fans show up, you know? This is what this post says and this is how they summarize it. And I'm just going off what they said, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I seem to remember this as well. She was pretty upset that people were saying that she was fired, but as I remember it, she was there for about one, maybe two weeks. First, her site showed an empty chair while she was at work. Then she said a cubicle cam was coming. Then there was a black and white cubicle cam. Then she was back home full time doing freelance web pages. So basically what they're claiming is that she went to work, tried to bring a camera to National Geographic, and then she lost the job. She either quit or she got fired. And they weren't chill with that necessarily, or we don't know all the details. But that's just sorry, there's just something funny to me about reading this like two and a half decade old like drama gossip <laughs> yeah. about this. It's very funny. <laughs> and it, it keeps going because her life would see a lot of different changes throughout 1998, which by that point, like she was well into her career. It was, you know, peaking, but also continuing to uh, solidify in the core audience. So in 1998, she moved with her boyfriend to Washington, DC. She installed three new cameras in her bedroom, kitchen, and living room. And that was when she began charging access to the site. Oh, I see. There was a guest of you, but it was limited to refresh every 20 minutes, and it would cost $15 to buy a subscription for pictures every two minutes. I see. So they finally were like, it's time to monetize this very popular thing we have. Yeah. And it's kind of the push to business. Right. The pivot. Her original appeal was that she lived an otherwise relatable life, and unfortunately, that was a natural casualty of popularity. Right, of course. It's the dilemma, right? The paradox of, like, the people who get popular by being relatable and, you know, humble and whatever, and all of a sudden, now they're famous. Now they're not relatable. It's gonna happen. It happens to everyone. <laughs> Upon moving, Jenny got a larger apartment and bought more expensive furniture. She took several business trips to Amsterdam with her accountant, Jody, but not too much work seemed to be getting done. I remember reading a bunch of posts of people talking about how angry they were that they went to uh, Amsterdam again and they were like here's a look look at the most recent photos that she posted it's just a blunt that Jody rolled they're just smoking weed from there uh, <laughs> it's like that's funny people getting mad about that again the parasocial attachment people get like entitled and weird about this stuff yeah it's like just bizarre to read that in the 90s like I don't know I, I guess I shouldn't be that surprised but that October Jenny formed JKR Inc and began DMCAing sites with old pics of her webcam she also deleted accounts suspected of piracy so if she thought you were sharing photos without permission then she would delete your account you'd have to pay another $15 it's crazy to think about how probably not very much if, if really any at all of this whole ordeal has been like archived you know what i mean yeah it was not archived for the most part most of these images aren't preserved a lot of mm -hmm. these sites that they linked weren't even archived and if they were they weren't functional it's not even that unusual but i'm just have to i just have to say it again it's crazy there's something that like four million people were looking at a day and there's just i mean not zero record of it existing but like the actual things they were looking at are, are gone forever minuscule compared to the original amount the amount of total content produced yeah versus the amount we have to look at has got to be just a tiny tiny sliver so here's just a page i wrote about how parasocial it was getting so she wasn't just doing the stream too where she was hanging out every day she also had a public journal that she would log into she got approximately 600 to 700 emails a day and she would often respond to a lot of those emails and fan mail that kind of cemented the feeling that she was closer than most celebrities because you could very much become her friend and even end up meeting up with her at JennyCon. Now, JennyCon was a joke name. It wasn't actually a convention. It was just an open right. invitation for people to hang out at her place every year. But friends, coworkers, and even viewers showed up in person sometimes. And I have a photo right there of a fan called Thumper. I don't, that's, <laughs> I don't know what he we did. We track this guy down and interview him on this. Dozens of fan sites and forums were made like a ton of them there was a german fan forum i saw as well as gossip sites like peeping moes which was basically a gossip site for all these different cam girls not just jenny right oh and she also had a internet talk show for the sync called the jenny show and it was in full motion that was the gimmick it was just videos actual video not just sequential images because of all of that change and all of this shift from like the parasocial aspect where she was kind of, you know, taking advantage of it and charging more and more people for it, showing more and more intimate acts on camera and not really differentiating herself from a cam girl, basically. The hypocrisy of it all. That was all part of the three main complaints that arose in late 1998. They started calling her nicknames like Jenny Scam and 
<laughs> Jenny fraud, which, you know, not as clever. Oh, my God. Jenny scam, the ultimate burn. The first thing was laziness. This is what you're saying is about, um, you know, people get interested in what their life is like outside of the experiment. This is the level that they were caring about that, the laziness. They felt Jenny was lying about trying to find jobs and was simply lazy or incompetent. They called her the slacker, like they, they nicknamed her slacker. It's just so funny that, yeah, you'd be so invested in this other person's life that you're getting mad at them, you know, for not having a job. But it's like, you know, why do you even care? Like, why? They're not crashing on your couch. What, why is this your problem? Again, it's just like there's so much like this this anti-fan stuff isn't even that like you know people have really heard of the stories like this before but like in the 90s i i know i have to keep reiterating that it's like this is like the proto case you're right this is the first example people were already doing this this is like the natural course of every evolution of every e-celebrity it just happens like it's just the predestined course it's gonna happen it's gonna happen to us man <laughs> it's over <laughs> <laughs> lack of fulfillment is the second one and that's basically tying into uh, the parasocial aspect jenny stopped fulfilling stream goals became distant with viewers the journals became more increasingly more s focused on like self on issues that didn't really concern anyone else basically and then the promiscuity which is jenny began to masturbate frequently on stream and have sex a lot on stream um there were a ton of posts talking about her vibrators, and there was even an alternate group for just purely Jenny Cam erotica, people distributing all of these, like, you know, racy, sexy photos in private. Right, right. The black market of it, I see. Now, this is one of those fan sites I mentioned before, and I just want you to look at this. I see. Oh, wow. It still exists. A tribute to a Incredible. web goddess. This is for Jennifer Ringley, creator of the Jenny Cam. In these pages, you will find my personal favorite pictures of Jenny. Well, there may be some more explicit pictures inside. If you're looking for an archive of nudes, please go elsewhere. <laughs> you know, we got the Playful Jenny Gallery, Long Haired Beauty Gallery, Best of the Black and White Era. <laughs> what a smile. Phone call, BRB. This is just what websites were like in the 90s, by the way. And this was not just anybody. This was not just a random person who made this site, okay? I want to be clear. This was made by a person named Josh. Now, his full name is out there, but obviously it wouldn't be right just to throw it in here, you know, it'd be kind of... Right. It's like pretty old stuff, whatever. But Josh was a fan of Jenny's that became her system administrator. He moderated discussions about her at Peeping Moe's, the gossip site and ran a really weird tribute site that we just looked at. Jenny strung him along, even inviting him to hang out in person several times. Many fans saw this as an indictment of her character, because if there's someone who's making that kind of website about you, you know, it's a little weird to invite him over. I, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Would you invite someone like that over? It's, um, okay, so I was gonna say, I don't really broach this because, like, it's not that there's anything wrong with doing erotic content, but, like, that plus parasocial people who get way too invested in your life is a bad combo. Let's put it that way. Thankfully, it's nothing too bad. It's just, that's why people were judging her, you know? People, again, people get invested in this drama. People will get, like, they'll get, they'll get aware of the, like, the tertiary side characters and, you know, all the little, all the lore. Sure, there were Jenny heads who were chatting about the gossip and the lore around the water cooler on fucking, you know, Y2K. <laughs> They often joked that she would cheat on Joffrey with him, and unfortunately for Josh, that did not happen because at one point he apparently visited and sat on her couch watching the stream as Jenny and Joffrey had sex. And Okay, see, that's just very odd. You have to admit, like, again, it's like there's nothing even wrong with doing a live stream, but, like, that is just a, such a yeah. <laughs> weird situation to be in. That's like a character from, like, a PTA movie or something. Like, that's bizarre. <laughs> that is a strange, and again, that's the kind of weird situation that was only happening for the first time in the world in the 90s. I mean, not, you know, the specifics, I mean. I don't know how to explain exactly what this I mean. This might be the first time this has ever happened in the history of the internet. This is insane. Like, it is just so insane to imagine this this situation, this guy. <laughs> and here are just some more incidents. So that's the Josh kind of stuff, which was spread everywhere. Here are some other incidents that got a lot of people upset with her in the fan groups. These were the main grievances. So this is the job offer incident. So in 1999, a user from Alt Fan Jenny Cam offered to hire Jenny to design a website for his company. Company. Jenny showed up late to meetings, didn't have a portfolio, and didn't return his follow-up calls. She never even provided a single example of a site she had designed. Yeah, okay, first of all, again, I, I, know, I know people are using this as a thing to get mad at Jenny or whatever, but like, it is kind of funny, like, a fan wanted to hire her. He's like, oh, I can't believe I got Jenny to work for my company. He's just so happy about it, but then it was like, you know... She just scammed him. She scammed him, or she just... Whatever happened, the point is it didn't work out, and then it's just like, it's just funny to imagine. I guess that it's guy. not so a like, scam. Maybe you shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't hire your people, like, your, like, idols, you know what I mean? Like, it's already a bad enough thing. It's like me even meeting your idols is going to bring it down sometimes. Like, because I didn't even think about that. I took that for granted. It's such a bizarre thing. Like, please work for me. Dude, imagine like like sending out like an email to your favorite e-slub. Be like, please come work for my company. And then they do a shitty 
shitty job and then you're like, ah, oh, I can't fire them. They're my favorite e lab. You know what I mean? It's such a, this is a bizarre, another bizarre situation. No, yeah, that's that's true. But guys, you know, hire us for work. We'll we'll do a good job. You know, <laughs> yeah, hire us for work. We'll do a good job, though. We're not like Jenny. We'll do a good job. Don't listen. Don't listen to this guy. I don't know what happened there. We'll do the job. No, the job offer incident is just another one of those like she's being lazy. She doesn't deserve our sympathy or something. Like people would call for boycotts over this kind of stuff. Oh man, so this comment. I'm just seeing this comment. So what did Jennifer do with that golden opportunity to prove herself? She fucked it up. She's a lazy hog. A fat pig. There's no secret as to what she does with her time. It's all on the cam. It's like, she's people, these people are fucking, fucking furious. These people are so mad. <laughs> and then this, this one is a little more deserved that they're mad about. This is the hospital uh-huh. incident. In February of 2000, Jenny was scheduled to visit a hospital in California with AIDS patients after being asked by a fan for charity. The residents prepared a party complete with a cake that read, Welcome Jenny. Jenny canceled an hour before through her assistant Jody, claiming the drive was was inconvenient from where they were staying. So she flaked on a hospital visit. A charity visit to hospital. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. I'm not gonna, not really any other way to cut that cake (laughs) if you want to look at it like that. And to make it all, you know... (laughs) To make it all even more and more like a modern internet celebrity, the relationship drama. Now, I didn't even bother to prepare a proper page for this. I just wrote it all out here because it's so fucking pointless. But I'm going to make you, I'm going to read through this and you're going to have to learn about all this, okay? Mm -hmm, Because you did. I I, I hear you. I know that feeling. It's all good. People joked about Josh replacing Joffrey, but it didn't stem from nowhere. Because in early 1999, Jenny broke with Joffrey and began sleeping with other men on camera. So just imagine like learning that you broke up with someone and you get to see how well they're doing with their new partner on live stream. Right. Truly a horrific thing to think about. But by March, she was officially dating Bob, a new guy named Bob, though it didn't last long. They were broken up by May, and she got back together with Joffrey. However, that was while still visiting Bob frequently in Philadelphia. Basically, there was a love triangle going on, where Bob and Joff were both fighting of for course. her heart. You know people love to eat that up. Joff no longer was no longer camera shy, and in August, he even set up his own camera where he and Jenny would sleep together on, you know, be intimate on camera. Even still, she would passive-aggressively insult him in her journals as Bob would openly remark that he was waiting for her to be single again. Yet, by early 2000, she seemed to move on from both, passive-aggressively calling Bob a loser as well. So, basically, this relationship drama, all of this was unfolding, and people really were invested in this too. They were just, once again, just adding a layer to the unrelatability for a lot of people where it kind of went from just a college girl living your life and you're not lonely on a Sunday because we're both doing laundry. And now there's all this fucking drama. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. And that leaves us in early 2000 where she seems to have moved on from both of the men. So this is where we start to talk about her friendship with Courtney. So Jenny stopped antagonizing her competitors. In fact, began hanging out with many cam girls and collaborating with them. It's just funny that like, yeah, like she, there was that early stuff like even on Letterman. She was like, I'm not like a paid stripper. Like the way that she said it like that, it's like, what is she, an unpaid stripper? One of those cam girls would be Pamela Courtney, or as she would just like to be called, Courtney. She was referred to by her first name. And her fiance, Dex Lopez. She ran the website Latitude 11, and she was based out of Sacramento, California. The couple were getting married that year and planned their wedding for November 11th. Just That's just to say that Courtney and Dex were really close. They're about to get married, and they were streaming by with Jenny. So they mm-hmm. became close and her fiance, Dex, even went out of his way to defend Jenny publicly throughout all of the hospital AIDS stuff. I mean, she had kind of went to Sacramento to visit them. I see. So this is kind of a timeline. You're probably going to see where this is going after a certain point, okay? In February of 2000, Jenny visits Sacramento. This is apparently for a business-related trip, but usually was not for business-related trips. It's just how it was. So she hung out with Dex and Courtney, and before long, she was planning to move to San Francisco, as in by February 10th, I believe, she was planning to move out to San Francisco. Many people thought that there was a fling there because she always talked about it in that way. She would talk about visiting an old friend in Cali and just seemed like she was expecting someone. You know, that was the same time she lost interest in Bob. That April, she would finally end up being able to move with the help of Courtney. They ended up getting houses on the opposite sides of the block, meaning their backyards were touching each other. That's how close they were living together and that's how closely they became friends, right? Neighbors. 
Okay, well, you can see why it's a bit of a shock when on July 10th, 2000, Courtney posts a journal revealing that her and Dex had broken up. That was because Dex had made a successful move on Jenny and then dumped her. They then began having sex on Jenny cam. It destroyed Courtney to the point that she checked herself into a hospital after leaving this BBS. Damn, that's uh, that's brutal. That's brutal to have to yeah, have that streamed live and, you know, with someone who thought you were, you know, they were your friend and your fucking neighbor. Your friend, your neighbor, and fucking Jenny of Jenny cam and they're doing it right now on live stream so this is what she wrote um this is just an excerpt i think i'm not sure if this is the full post but i posted on my bbs that i was going back to sacramento tonight then i was told dex and jenny were having sex on cam again and damn i can't do it i can't go back there it's not my home any longer i could never step foot in the backyard again of the very least the carcass of dex and jen's last little party still lay strewn across the yard i can't be in that house knowing what is happening around the way i have to let it go i have to let the control that this situation has over me go for my own health they're all break and then that means i've lost all control so she can have it all my man my backyard my neighborhood i wasn't meant to have it i'll be back sometime this week to find a place and pack i hope i'll be able to keep my dog i miss her i miss home Damn. Well, I can definitely understand, uh, you know, Jenny's giving a lot of fuel for the haters, if, if you want to look yeah. at it like that. Not only did Jenny not seem to care, but she was committed on staying with Dex. Before the month had ended, they got matching tattoos of each other's names on their fingers. That's, uh, that's always a good sign. I cannot find photos of this, but this was referenced several times, many times throughout the archive. Bear in mind, this is all while being $20,000 in debt. Now, I would assume it's, that was from moving. It was just mentioned in one of the articles after she moved to Sacramento, but right. this completely destroyed her image among fans as fan groups, gossip sites, and even news outlets turned against her. Even Josh left her side because of this. Even Josh? Even Josh. Even no. Josh. No. Jenny and Dex released their own account of events in August, but it did little to win people over. In fact, an earlier version of Jenny's post actually leaked somehow onto the BBS, but I didn't put them in this presentation because it's not really that important i don't <laughs> i don't know if anyone wants to uh to look that deeply into this drama but you can see there's a washington post article about the incident called all a woman can bear and it's like jenny how could you you redheaded little minx you amoral man trapper stealing your friend's fiance and making love to him in front of thousands <laughs> man yeah that'd be crazy having articles written about your fucking love life in the washington post it's kind of horrifying yeah <laughs> This page is all about Dex and Jenny, and you can see a photo of them right there. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the second, let's not spoil that to the audio only listeners mm -hmm. yet. But following this, Jenny's online presence isn't very interesting. It was enough of a disillusionment to remove the novelty that separated her from other cam girls. She stopped updating her diary and began to lose interest in the site. Dex and Jenny's relationship didn't crash and burn like many expected. They continued dating for years and had increasing amounts of sex, which became a lot raunchier. BDSM and other kinks cemented the ambiguity of her not being a cam girl. And you can see um the latest Dex sex times um on the right here. And this is a schedule. Thank you, Michael L. McLean, whoever you are. Wherever you are out there somewhere, you were on some Usenet 25 years ago. <laughs> this was a full just list of all the different sex positions. Time-stamped <laughs> list. Yeah, time-stamped <laughs> list of, of them having sex. On that particular day, there were more of these. People, it's, uh, it's funny. People were crazy. Okay, I don't even, I, I don't know if this still happens. Does this happen today? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there's people get, I mean, I guess I do know people still get this like parasocially attached to other people, but I, I don't know. I don't know how, what the, the state of 24 seven live streaming your life is. I'm sure there's still people doing that right now on Twitch, but I don't know if there, it's like, you know, you could capture as much of a audience doing that. Like the novelty isn't quite there anymore. So, but I don't know. That's kind of crazy too, to think that she was streaming this like through her own site. So she didn't have to like follow like Twitch rules or anything like that. She could, you know, stream, you know, sexual stuff too, obviously. Unfortunately, not for long, because that proved negative for reasons beyond audience capture. In 2003, in early December, Jenny announced that Jenny Cam would be shutting down for good on New Year's Eve. PayPal began to crack down on pornography and closed her account as frontal nudity violated their acceptable use policy. Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> Yep, and that was necessary for her premium subscriptions, which proved to be the final straw with Jenny Cam closing down on December 31st, 2003. Quite a ride.
Now, after that, it's really kind of just little bits and pieces of stuff. In the immediate years that followed, Jenny disappeared entirely from the internet. After being live nearly 24-7 for over six years of your life, it's probably no surprise why she chose to resign to privacy. Now, there have been a few interviews over the years that give insight to where she's been. Her and Dex seem to have broken up in 2006, and she began dating someone else. They're married now. She's a programmer still and has stored all of the webcams and footage from Jenny Cam in her garage. Oh, she still has the footage. That's crazy. She still has it, which there is not a public full access archive of everything. Most of Jenny right. Cam is lost media now. I see. And it probably will stay that way. I doubt she has much interest in like making an archive of that available. Maybe. I mean, someday. Who knows? I don't know. I shouldn't say that definitively or anything. But... Maybe she could sell the rights to someone to do a documentary about all of this. Right. We, we could call it The Truman Show. This is less interesting than The Truman Show. Josh didn't right. really do anything. <laughs> there's a, there's enough interpersonal drama. I guarantee any, any, any Hollywood writer could punch this up into something ready for a screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, Jenny remains offline with no presence on social media. So you cannot follow her on Twitter. No. I get it. I mean, like you said in the first part, I mean, I, you know, that's enough sharing with your life online. It's yeah, I mean, with parasocial weirdos for one lifetime. The years from like 19 to I think she was 27 when she retired. That's just so much of like your life to just be spent in front of a camera and honestly like think like none of the mistakes she made were that egregious i mean like, that's the thing i was gonna say earlier like it, like you know obviously there's some examples you could point to like the the hospital thing that are kind of not cool but imagine having your whole life put in on a camera and all your worst moments out seen by thousands of people and fucking had like articles written about you all i'm saying is if we could get a highlight reel of all the worst things you ever did in the past six for years, like your college like fun little project yeah so that's what i mean where it's like i, I quote unquote get the parasocial weirdos i understand that at least but like you know i think it's obviously better to have a separation of where you can respect someone's privacy if you need to but yeah that's the story of jenny cam i don't know it's interesting it's crazy like i said earlier it's pretty much like the first e-celeb i mean the i don't first know you one. there's other like maybe people had, had little viral stories here and there but the first cam girl you can give her that cam girl first cam girl on letterman i mean that's a crazy that's awesome that's a pretty good get like actual legitimate famous like i was on television because of this famous and uh not in a diminishing way not to not a knocker but like she could like come back online with the social media presence now it's been 20 years it's not, not not that no one would care i'm sure there's some die hard old head jenny cam fans out there who'd be happy happy but like i don't you know, know if there she are could do it without it ruining her whole life is all i mean i mean I, I get why she wouldn't want to i'm not saying she should or but whatever but i'm just saying like she could if she wanted to which naturally she doesn't i do wonder will someone who watched jenny cam like comment on this video that might be too old i would love it. If, if you actually watch this if you if you're an old head and you if you have a memory feel free to leave a comment just just any of your memories about this because this is quite the uh piece of internet history i wasn't familiar with this i definitely was not familiar with this story beforehand which is funny like i said the beginning it definitely is a solid piece of net lore to look at it's a true classic netler episode okay it's not something exactly contemporary it, because i i keep picking like <laughs> I keep picking fake stuff, okay? Fake history should not count as real history. I'm pretty sure at least half the episodes have this disclaimer now, but it's like, you know, the name Netlore is mostly just to be a cool name, not to be like, we're only allowed to discuss this exact specific genre of thing. But I, at the same time, I, I always like, I just like story. I naturally like stories like this, so I'm, I'm happy to cover them as well. I was, I was thinking for a moment, I was like, maybe we could watch all of the Jenny show. But first of all, the Jenny show is not that interesting. It's basically just vlogs before anyone could make a vlog. And right. not not all the episodes are out there. That's more lost media. And again, that's another, that's such a huge, like, there's such a huge contingency on YouTube of people out there who are like doing family vlogging, just like life vlogging. And like, this was sort of the precursor to that in a weird way. Not like vlogging. I mean, it is kind of vlogging, but it's not vlogging, vlogging the way people think of it. It's blogging with a webcam that isn't a solid video. I don't know how to explain it. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. If you listen to the episode, which you did, you know what I'm saying. It's a, it's an interesting proto internet thing that has just like, again, there's people hearing the story and they're like, that doesn't even sound that crazy, but it's like, you don't understand. This is like the first time. It's the first time, guys. Trust me. That's why That's why you had to know about all this relationship trauma. It's not just because mm -hmm. I had to read it. That was the, it was the downfall in quotation marks. Like, obviously, the real downfall, obviously, is PayPal. And again, it's so funny to imagine that, like... Well, that's actually... No, no, no. Well, that's the thing. She says it was PayPal at the time. I probably didn't emphasize that enough, is that um, it wasn't actually just PayPal. That was the final straw. Mm. Um, She was looking to get out for a while. And she later, on reflection, said that it just didn't feel right having the camera pointed under at all times anymore. 
anymore. It, it, it was something that she would have to admit later on when she was more removed from you it. You really need a very specific type of personality to do that. I mean, you couldn't, I mean, you'd have to pay me a lot of money to be willing to put up with a camera on me at all. I mean, I, I just wouldn't do that. I'll be honest, I just wouldn't not I, feel I to would do hate that. that. I, I, I like my privacy. Dude, people would call me such a slacker. I would be getting the, the you're a fat hog like comments. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. I mean, that's, what, that's why, I mean, I kept trying to be empathizing with Jenny because it's like, I don't want to, you know, I feel bad people criticizing your work ethic every time you take a break everyone's like you're slacking off i feel bad i mean I, like i said i didn't watch any of this obviously so i don't really have any firsthand experience but i know people get so emotionally invested in other people's lives and you know it's like they're not making videos fast enough they're fucking lazy piece of shit it's crazy that the fan to anti-fan pipeline just in general is a crazy thing like it's it's one thing to be a fan to not being a fan anymore and just like you know you don't care about something so you don't think about it you don't watch it it's not part of your life but from being a fan to being an anti-fan where it's still part of your life you just you, it's almost like the exact inverse where you just talk about how much you hate it all the time. It's crazy too because they were so in love with this person that not only were they trading like the nudes and stuff, they had programs to save all of the images onto their computer. Right. It was, um, Dude, that's the crazy thing. It's lost media out there outside of her being in archives in her garage. But like there probably is some crazy Jenny Cam head out there, some old head who does have some like ancient hard drive. There, there is. There definitely. I mean, Josh probably has it. But they have like this, these huge archives of all these rippers. It's like going from like loving someone that much to where you have like a huge folder of all like these photos of them from the whole day to just hating them. And that's like must be so much hatred. That's like scary. It's the parasocial thing. It's you get that invested in their life. Like you don't you wouldn't like hating someone is like the opposite side of the coin is loving them because it's like it's the, the true opposite of, you know, of both is just complete apathy. Like I was saying, so you have to have gone through. It's like, I don't know. It's not just like, you know beta cuck incels being like oh i wish i could be with her like you know that guy on the couch or whatever but there's just guys who just casually you know people just get invested in drama like i said the water cooler people are gonna get oh i hate jenny because the relationship stuff you know what i mean i don't know it's, yeah reality tv and in that sense you know it really is reality tv it's funny you say that it's a precursor to reality tv it totally is in a lot of ways but it's also funny because it's unlike reality tv you, like you said it actually is reality tv this is what it really was like and people in real life do have crazy relationship drama bullshit and it gets heightened when you're a fucking an e-celeb and you're the first e-celeb and you have all these eyes on you from people who are like you know they don't have a million other streamers to go choose from i mean even though she did kick off a whole like cam girl boom type thing it's still you're still gonna get cred as the first one i mean just just automatically having that kind of established fan base is like gonna keep you it's like an engine that keeps going and uh well i don't have any more notes Damn, so. that was it that was uh quite the uh quite the story i have to say i thought that was a good one i, I enjoyed today's episode thank you I was worried because I wasn't sure where her position in history actually was because, you know, there's all the headlines, but first cam girl, you can give her easily. But first reality TV, I wonder, because technically, I guess. Well, when people say the reality TV has so many like connotations when you say it like that, like people really do think of the overproduced thing when you say it. But like, I mean, it really was a precursor to it in a lot of ways. And uh, well, it, it predated Big Brother. I know that. Right. That's actually, yeah, that's that's early, I was going to say. Um, so it's like, I don't know, like you said, it's precursor to a lot of internet culture-y kind of stuff too, like that level of obsessing over some stranger's life. And uh, I mean, people have always had like parasocial attachments to like the people they see on television. But it, you know, obviously like the, the whole gimmick of the real 24-7 stream is like, it's it's real, it's real, it's real, it's someone's real life. That's why they think people felt way more intimately connected. And that's why, you know, as soon as you do one thing to piss off these people who are intimately invested in your life, then, then they, you've developed developed a true hater that's scary as fuck man well thank you for listening to episode 10 of net lore now we actually have the fan art section to go over we, we took a little bit of a break between episodes so we have a good amount of fan art to look at i'm always so appreciative much. of this thank you guys um yeah very much appreciative here's a funny story you might remember a few episodes back when we were like hey everyone we have a net lore email address you can send like episode suggestions and and uh it's netlorepodcast at gmail.com you might remember that because we didn't we both this is not this is not a joke we both like as soon as that episode was done like as soon as we were done recording that line about hey we got an email neither of us thought about it one single time we both completely forgot about it and we didn't check it once until a couple days ago so there's a lot of great fan art a lot of great emails in there apologies if you sent something to that email address now we're checking it now we're remembering to check the email address so we have an announcement we have the net lore has an email address but really this time because we're actually going to remember it <laughs> we will check it and we will not <laughs> ghost you on accident yeah dude you actually shocked me so much when you said it because i was like oh my god no <laughs> because <laughs> it, it's all good it's all most of these people were nice enough to tag us with the fan art and stuff they sent on twitter as well so um 
All right, now let's take a look at some of the awesome fan art we got. So this first piece is by Artsy Emilio, and uh, I love this one. This is a cool piece. I, you know, I, I always, I, people always love to use our little logo, and I always appreciate seeing how people incorporate I that know. into the. Uh, I love, I love this one. It's like we're being, um, we're stuck in like the saw bathroom. We're being tortured by net lore. <laughs> exactly. No, I have a great, great look in my eyes. It's cool though. It's. <laughs> it's really cool I, I, I don't know this is partially for me not being able to draw at all which is just every time i see any fan art i'm just like wow i'm not trying to be patronizing it really is like that to me the composition is really dope like <laughs> no this is a good one i love just how it's framed mm -hmm. good colors too good uh good lighting effect very much appreciate that one now the next one i i appreciate <laughs> it although it's slightly horrifying yeah this is this is scary by uh lua computer this is funny okay so i do you remember that very cute very funny image uh we got from kibi of me as like a horse as shown in the last episode well for some reason i for some reason i said you can draw me as a horse you have to be careful i forgot you have to be fucking careful what you say on this podcast because all you little freaks out there listening to me and taking me seriously but here's a lovely picture of me as a horse I don't really know. I don't think I, um, again, apologies to the, uh, the, the Spotify listeners. Feel free to, well, actually, you, you're going to hang out for a second, but we'll get through this for too long. You're, you're so lucky that you can't see this. <laughs> you're lucky on this one, but, uh, I love it. It's horrifying. I love it. It's so scary. It, it is. It, it's scary. I like, it is a little scary. I like that I am scared in the drawing, though. It's cute. Yes, your little, the little doodle. <laughs> No, it's a good one. It's I actually I quite like this. Um, I said it. I can't take it back. So I'm still you're still allowed to draw me as a horse. I can't take that away from you. Now I really love this next one. This uh, by Camario. This is really great. Uh, they have a nice comment too. They said that Netlore is their favorite podcast to listen to, which is crazy to think that this fucking podcast would barely. Yeah, that's nice. To me and Bernie, we're, we're still joking to each other. Like, dude, Netlore is like a real podcast. Like, what? Because it's, it's still like, what the hell? It doesn't feel like that sometimes. But yeah. Now every time we see fan art like this, now it's, I've still I still get that feeling. Like, what? Netlore is like a real podcast. Yeah, this one looks awesome. I love the colors on it. It looks so crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool background too and the, and the katakana and everything. No, this is just a great piece. Love it. Love it. This is a silly little one from BioLink Master. Uh, <laughs> if you remember the Pepsi oh universe God. from the last episode, what if there was a Netlore universe? You're going to have to use your imagination on that We're one. We're fucking fused together. Holy it's shit. It's the molecular <laughs> structure of a Netlore with the, the nucleus the, 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 at the center being the logo. It's, it's, it's great. That's fucking crazy. That's scary. It's a fun little, uh, <laughs> it's a little scary. I like it though. That's why it's good. A great little sketch from Bluebot of uh, me and Bernie. Uh, and I just like, I, I just love us looking at a little computer screen doing net lore together. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. This is really, really cute art style. I love how like it's just sketched out and like the, the lighting on it. It's real art. It's like someone really drew us, which is insane. We really did it. We made it. Podcast was a success because we got fan art. Mission accomplished. Now we can stop. No, I'm just kidding. Here's a great one from Scott Tank. Uh, sorry, some of these I are that were. I don't know necessarily what to credit people. I will usually credit people with whatever their Twitter username is if you send it over Twitter. If you send it over email, I'm sorry. I'm just sending. I'm just crediting you with whatever your display name on Gmail is. So thank you, Scott Tank, for this uh, Sanic Cyber Shell and, and, and little <laughs> MS Paint Bernie. I love this, MS Paint dude. Bernie. Is classic. <laughs> That's a great pick. I mean, I love to see me as Sanic, but you you are like fucking <laughs> you are. Like it's fucking Sanic. Holy shit. The earth is Pepsi. Dude, this is so this is us during the Pepsi. Yeah, the, I appreciate the, the shout out to the last episode too. Very topical one. Now on uh, this one, I feel I always say this about things, and I but I I, I extra mean it this time. I apologize for not knowing how to say your name. I think it's Maite Susa, but we'll have a, we'll have it on screen. But this this art is just absolutely This one is insane. I love this one. <laughs> the, the signature says my Peco. Again, I, I uh, well, however you want to be sorted, you send us a message because we both loved this piece. This is one, this one is awesome. Just I don't even know how to just describe it because i'm no art critic but like the the whole just the painterly it's so well rendered dude your face too it just looks so but yeah this could be like hung up in a museum or something this one's awesome this one's beautiful it's like in our mansion like a fucking portrait so, yeah this is one this one's going up in the net lore mansion uh for episode we're getting a frame for episode 100 um here's another really fun one by uh tjf uh this one's very nostalgic this is the composition is great i love the net lore uh word art logo and all the little all the little things I, again people they continued the trend of drawing us with like joints which i think is hilarious i don't even understand where that came from but i love it but no this one is great great use of the logo great just a very fun a lot of energy on this one again i'm not great at describing why i like art so I'm i know it just it just looks cool it, it does it does remind me yeah, of it like, just um, looks cool i don't know how to explain it. it just looks cool guys it just fucking looks cool it does remind me of like uh 
I mean, I know this is intentional, but just like those old, old computer programs and like the the wacky, like, this is the internet, kids, like art. <laughs> exactly. Yes. It's totally like one of those old informational it's things. It's so cool, though. That like perfectly fits. That was great. If we ever released a Nettle or album, that could be the album cover. But uh, this next one is very spooky. Uh, Met Art PV is what could be described as the Nettle the first Nettle creepypasta art. But uh, I don't even know scary. how to describe this one other than it, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's a terrifying image. Why are we so scary in this? I don't know. I don't know. What do we do to deserve to be so scary? But I like it. I'm reminded of myself. I, I almost feel like I'm modeled sort of after that whole Majin Sonic thing from Sonic CD, but it's also giving me like like some kind of fucking Friday Night Funkin' Creepypasta vibes too. You just look terrifying. I don't know what I'm supposed to... I look like the moon emoji. <laughs> you are truly like a demon, but I love it. We're both giving this grin like the like the logo. This hey, one's a great. have this you ever heard great. about Metlar? Demonic. Anyways, let's move on to the next one before I get nightmares. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Popular Truck 6, for this awesome uh, Bernie ice cream. This one's so cute, dude. They drew your character, like, so, like, huggable. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it just looks like it's colored like a bright, sunny day. It's so nice. You know, it looks so nice. It looks so chill. Just like, ah. Uh. Someone, if you're if you're an ice cream maker out there, you got to make that Bernie ice cream a real thing. A real thing. I want it. Our own Mr. Beast uh, cafe is going to pop up with the, the Bernie, the Netlore cafe with the Bernie ice cream. It'd be good. They could also just edit the Sonic ones. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always like seeing how people render my guy. Like, are they going to give me the, 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 the boxer shorts or something? This one's great. And like almost like the inverted Sonic shoes. It's a, it's a cool look. I really like it. The boxer shorts actually make like so much sense because they match with everything. I know it looks good. Again, I know I'm always saying this, but there's good color composition on that one too. Now, you know, you don't have to be a, a like a high level masterpiece artist like that one guy to send us art. You can also just send us shit post art like Doko clip here. <laughs> I love Netlore. We love you too, buddy. We love you too, buddy. You got the Charles Barkley in the corner. I love how they drew you though. I like how totally fucked up I look. I know I'm totally scraggly. Like it's not just the stubble. I got like little <laughs> chin hairs like all fucked up. I can up. like imagine that little thing running around though. That's the thing. It's classic. A similar stain to last one, uh, Bobo Jojo 12 drew us two little faces. And I love your face. You look so happy. You just look so happy. And I look so done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> this one I also had to include uh, Giraffe Clones Netlore. I love the Netlore with like, you can see it's like in the process of being added to like MS Paint. And uh, I don't know why. True just, the image, just the image of Cybershell's head with no body just connected to legs. That's a very fun interpretation. I love that one. <laughs> if only they knew that. That's how it really was. That's how it really is in real life. I'm, I have no torso. That's the canonical drawing. You're all drawing it wrong. No, no, no. no. The canonical drawing is this next one by James Miles Newcar, where you have the 420 hat. Dude, that's so dope, dude. You look so cool in that one. I'm I'm just like i'm so done it, i know <laughs> it's like so fucking awesome it's like um it's like those fucking beavis and butthead juggalo shirts you know what i'm talking about mm-hmm. dude this i think this guy has drawn me like this before is the thing because you first showed me this and i was like wait why have i his why is he drawing an image that i've seen before and then he in the email referenced the image he was like i made that and i'm like holy shit he's still around like i mm-hmm. didn't know that yeah thank you low he also sent us this little sketch right below with the with the black and white with their signature very cute very good art do you actually want to talk about the last piece of fan art? Did you actually just straight up ask? It? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, we could talk about it. We could talk about Thank it. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna have to show off. Um, if you haven't seen my video, there's a video on my channel explaining where my avatar came from. And there was this picture of a, a girl next to a plush. And I have to show that on screen because you're gonna need that context in order to understand this the last piece of fan art, which is, uh, I think, let's just put it this way. It speaks for itself. <laughs> Unless you have something you want to say about it. <laughs> oh, I have something to say, which is... You know, my friends, they listen to this podcast and I had to, I had to prompt them with this image before they saw it because I knew that the moment they got their hands on this image, I would never... (laughs) Hear the end They're of They're going to bully you relentlessly. So, yes. I, I Here's why I was giving you the out to say you didn't want to say anything about it. Because the more you protest, the more you say you don't want images like this, you're going to get more of them. So, let's leave it at that. It sucks that the image is well drawn. Like, <laughs> Thank you very much. By the way, this was literally uh, someone, thank you, Charles Roberts, who commissioned this art for us from someone named T Stylus on Instagram. You didn't even draw it yourself. You made someone no, this else was a commissioned draw it. Art. Someone, one of our fans was crazy enough to commission this art. <laughs> That's how crazy our fans are. <laughs> Look, it'd be like better if you just drew it yourself this wasn't even a labor of love <laughs> no it was deliberately designed just to troll you bernie and that's why i was trying to say <laughs> you shouldn't you shouldn't let you shouldn't show your weakness you shouldn't let them know how much it got you sometimes the trolls win okay <laughs> i think it's awesome art i love it thank you very it's much it's well drawn the artist did a good job and you know the commissioner got your you got your money's worth <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. And now our last two pieces of fan works, they're not even, I mean, I was going to say, I don't know how to phrase it, because it's not that they're not art. It's said that they're not. No, music is not art. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant to say, Bernie. I just stopped myself here. We actually got two little songs. One of them, the first one, very cute little parody of the cat dog theme song. So why don't we just take a listen to that really quick? Thank you very much, Sully Boy Music. One fun day, there were two gay nerds who wanted to tell things they had heard. So they coked up a podcast six months fast and started sharing stories of days gone past. Ned Lord, Ned Lord. Yeah, everyone will prepare for a little Ned Lord. A little snowman and a wee blue rat that talk about this and talk about that. From shooting games to a Pepsi candy internet facts and all they can. Ned Lord, Ned Lord. Sit on down and some Ned Lord. Net lore, net lore. Yeah, you can be sure they know some net lore. That was fucking Classic. awesome. That was crazy. I know, right? That's what I was. I was like, "What the hell?" When I heard that, I was like, I, "For some reason, like I, I know about. I knew fan art was a thing, but I didn't think we were gonna get any fan songs." And uh, as, as a cat dog appreciator, let me just say, I quite enjoyed that one. That was that was very nice. I don't feel worthy. Like <laughs> that's so like awesome. It's crazy. It was fuck. awesome. Thank you very much, Sully Boy Music. It's it's much appreciated. And the craziest part to me was that th- we got two pieces of fan music. Uh, this last one is going to be it was a net lore unofficial outro theme by uh sorry i fucking I lost your twitter username but on youtube it's by the name ranbu r-a-n-b-u thank you ranbu spelled. thank you ranbu um i think this is an awesome little outro theme and uh instead of just playing it for you we're just gonna wrap up the podcast and then we'll we'll, we'll send it off with our unofficial maybe official outro theme i mean let us know what you guys think in the comments or the spotify q a because we are reading those guys or the spotify q and i don't yes i thought i was gonna say i said this before i was like oh i guess i shouldn't say comment on it because you can only do that on youtube but no there you can't I have no idea how Spotify works, guys. I apologize. But yes, you can leave us questions or comments on Spotify too. We'll try to read them. Half of them are just people saying that, thanks for doing a visual episode for the audio podcast. Again, apologies. We're, I don't know. Maybe we'll figure something out. I, I, I don't want to not acknowledge the fan art, but I admit that it's a little sus if you want to tap out. But then yeah, I was going to say earlier, I would say you could tap out if you're just an audio listener, but then you'd miss these awesome fan music. So thank, hopefully you stuck around. And uh, yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks for listening. I thought this was a great episode and this was not a super visual heavy episode. So thank you very much for that one, Bernie. No problem. It was an accident. I was worried about not having enough images because I forget. Right. I know. That's just my brain. Is I'm a video making guy in my mind. You want to have all sorts of visual aids and there's nothing wrong with it. And it doesn't make the audio version works necessarily having them and there were some if you were not paying attention there were some visual aids but like this one mostly you could understand just by listening to us talk guys we will be back hopefully before too long thank you so much for listening i thought this was a good one i enjoyed it thanks for all the fan art and thank you randy for our unofficial outro theme check it out 